everyone, welcome to Conversations with Nicole. Imagine what it takes to cycle from Oregon to Virginia. I guess today we'll do just that on June 5th to raise support to send impoverished students in Belize to school this fall. Reverend Marshall Nord is racing in the Trans America Bike Race. Marshall is an ultra bike cyclist. He is also the Chief Communications Officer at Pathlight International. Marshall is combining his passion for ultra cycling and the children of Belize by racing in the Trans America Bike Race to support Pathlight. Welcome to my show, Marshall. Thanks, Nicole. I'm so pleased to be here. I'm so happy to have you as my guest. So a lot of people would like to know, what is an ultra cyclist? <laughs> I know, right. Uh, obsessive compulsive disorder on the bike. Um, if you go more than 200 kilometers, which is approximately 125 miles, you're on a consistent basis for races, you're considered an ultra, that's entry level ultra. So uh, most of the races that I do, um, depending on the type of race, they're in kilometers or miles, but 200, a lot of the races are 500 miles. And then you have these multi-day races that we're talking about today. So ultra cycling is, if you like to ride your bike, ride it far, and you go over 200 kilometers, you're in the ultra cycling community. So <laughs> ultra cycling, ultra athlete that you are, and you have decided to combine your love for cycling and racing to raise money for children in Belize. So talk about the races that you've participated in and how it became this joint venture to raise money for charities. Yeah, yeah. In 2015, I wanted to do something epic for my 50th birthday, So, uh, which was 2016. And so I did the Race Across America and we raised for the local food pantry in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Uh, we raised you know, close to $20,000 for them. And I got hooked on this charity thing. So then the next race that I did, we raised money for the food pantry again. Uh, and then um, last year we raised money for Belize, which I'll tell you about. Uh, the Pathlight organization. And so this year I'm like, oh, we're going to go big. We're going to try to get 10 impoverished students in Belize into school and to our after school program, which ensures their success. So that was the impetus for it. How far could I ride and how much money could we raise? Well, you've done amazing things so far with your ability to raise money to help others and to also um, showcase what ultra cycling is all about. So now you are involved with Pathlight. You hold a position with this Pathlight International Organization. So you're combining two things, your love for Pathlight and cycling. Talk about Pathlight International and what it does for the children in Belize. Sure. Pathlight International is a 501c3 based here in the States. We also have Pathlight Belize. So we empower the children of Belize to receive a quality education, to break free from poverty, to reach their God-given potential. In Belize, beautiful destination spot to go for a vacation, but 50% of the country is in poverty. So we have 450,000 people, 50% of those are in poverty, and 51% of those 50 are all children. What happens in Belize quickly after primary school, the government doesn't pay for high school. If you don't go to high school, you can't get a job. So it's systemic. These uh, generational poverty cycles continue. Pathlight goes in there. They identify the brightest students with the most potential, get them into school, high school, an after school program that not only does job skill training, mentoring, tutoring, counseling, but also spiritual formation. And we're trying to change the country by helping those children break free from poverty. It's hard for me to even imagine children not having access to mm -hmm. high school mm -hmm. you know, or even, you know, college. We are so blessed in mm -hmm. America where we live to have those opportunities and that your organization would try to help these children get to that next level. Marshall, tell folks what happens when they don't get that education that they need. I mean, it's tough there for children. What can happen to them? Oh, it's terrible. They end up selling produce on the side of the road. And these are bright kids, bright as some of our kids here in the United States in Rock Hill. They just don't have opportunity. And it's not that their parents don't love them. Their parents are trying to just keep food on the table. I visit these children. Their disposition in the world is so great. They're so joyful, but they're living on dirt floors and sleeping in these, you know, uh, questionable hammocks hanging from, you know, rafters and that's their life and they just don't have opportunity. So by lifting them out of poverty, getting them educated, that is really the key that unlocks their future. And for us, you know, developing them spiritually to have, you know, spiritually minded um, Christ centered kids in Belize in leadership 20 years from now, it'll change the country. 
and the children that you you talk about, not only are they impoverished, but unfortunately they can end up in the gangs, mm. sex trafficking. I mean, it's yeah. You you you've done your homework. It's it's actually quite tragic. The gangs uh, just really latch onto the young boys, specifically sex trafficking. And for girls, you know, there's no opportunity. These girls don't have any uh, hope. So someone says, "Oh, I can help you," and they end up, uh, you know basically enslaving them. It's quite tragic. So Belize is between Guatemala and Mexico, right there on the coastline, really beautiful. And really all these kids need is opportunity. And, you know, they will thrive with that opportunity. So that's what we try to do. We try to break them free from poverty. You said opportunity, they get that opportunity. And I imagine when you see these kids go into school, get that education, and you see how their life changes. Oh, I can't even imagine how that would feel. Tell me about that. Well, every June and coming up this June 5th uh, on the date, uh, they are graduating. And so we get to see the transformation from when they first come in, they're shy, they're timid, to where they graduate, they're well-spoken, they're confident, you know, they feel like they can have the skills they, they've acquired the skills they need to go out get a job a lot of them continue to tertiary education because there are other funding available for that and we sponsor some of those but really these kids come out and the thing that gets me the most they're educated they're smart a lot of them are top of their class uh, they say things like i knew god before but now i know god loves me and has a plan for my life and those sorts of things just kind of hits you here that wow you really have changed your life by sponsoring a student and uh that's what i'm trying to do raise money to get 10 of these impoverished kids who don't have sponsors into school for the next year and we're almost there well talk about that you said june 5th they graduate june 5th you hit the road with this <laughs> awesome race so tell me about the race tell yeah. me about your goal and what you need to get 10 of these children into school this fall yeah, real quickly, the Transamerica Bike Race is a self-supported race from Tran uh, from uh, Astoria, Oregon to Yorktown, Virginia. 4,100 miles, 160,000 feet of vertical climbing, all self-supported. You can't have any help from anybody. Basically, whatever you can carry on the bike or your credit card, you, who can get across the, the country the fastest. So what we're trying to do is get 10 impoverished students in Belize. And the exciting thing is, as of this morning, we've got nine and a half students sponsored. We're only eight hundred dollars away from getting the 10th student sponsored it's super exciting um, these kids are already identified because we've already vetted them that they have super potential so i'm just trusting uh, that as the race continues through social media and outlets like this so thank you very much that we're going to raise that extra 800 dollars and just put some joy on 10 10 impoverished children's faces that they now have opportunity to pursue their dreams yeah i believe you will get exactly what you need to help 10 children get Thank what you. they need this fall. 100%. Hey, are you nervous? I mean, like, what do you do? I mean, I know you train like crazy for this yeah. race, but what, what's going on in your mind? How do you prepare? I mean, you get psyched up for it. That's a lot. It's a lot, Marshall. Yeah, yeah. So my wife is a psychotherapist and she said at dinner last night, she said, so what emotions are you feeling right now for the race? And I go, I feel nothing. I just want to do well. She goes, no, what are you, are you excited? I said, I'm just like, I'm ready to start because you you know what Mike Tyson famously said, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face, right? So the first day is critical. I gotta have a really good first day and a really good 10th day. I'm gonna average 200 to 250 miles a day and uh, sleep, you know, four to six hours, you know, sometimes in a hotel, sometimes just ditching on the side of the road in a park and just whoever can get across the country the fastest. So physically, Nicole, I'm in the best shape of my life. You know, I'm mid fifties. I can feel like I can conquer the world. I'm healthy. The bike's tuned up. I put in the miles. Uh, I'm ready to go. Uh, so I'm super thrilled to start. 55 people from around the world competing, some of the best ultra cyclists in the world. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, you're going to do great. I'm, I'm, so, I'm just excited listening to you talk about it. And I can't wait to follow your journey. How can people help you? How can people support you? And how can people support the children of Belize? Well, I appreciate that very much. If you go to uh, pathlight.org yeah. forward slash T-A-B-R, which is Transamerica Bike Race, uh, pathlight.org, um, then you'll basically can donate right there and join our team and you'll receive an email from me and a link to follow us. You could also Google Transamerica Bike Race if you just want to follow the race. Yeah. Uh, you could Google my name with Pathlight, which is one word. Uh, but yeah, you know, 
any, as you know, there's power in numbers. So you get 15, $25, $100, and you get enough people doing that. And we're at our goal and we're super excited. I already have 44 people that have come alongside me, uh, not only financially, but prayerfully. And just to say, hey, dude, come on, let's let's do this. Let's let's climb that mountain, you know, kind of like our, my Mount Everest, but it's across the United States. Well, you have our support in our household. My husband and I, we are yes. friends with you and your lovely wife. And we're we will be following your journey. We will be praying for you. Uh, we have been blessed enough in our own lives to be able to support you. And I have all of the information you just talked about in today's description so that others can follow you and pray for you. And also, uh, if they feel led to do so, financially support your mission, because I think it's powerful. It is life-changing and God blesses all of that. And I, I pray that he will keep you safe in your journey as you do this for the children of Belize. Thank you. You know, I'm looking to push beyond my limits. Um, I'm looking to achieve some sort of glory, but also to change a life. And uh, you and your husband Watts were most generous. You really got this ball rolling with the fundraising. And uh, here we are. We're almost to the goal. And thank you so much for all your support. It means the world to me. Absolutely. Well, Marshall, thank you for joining me today for Conversations with Nicole. We will be following your journey and we know that God will keep you safe and bless you along the way. And in the end, the children of Belize will have a better life because of you and your mm-hmm. efforts. Yes. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Thank you, Nicole. Bye. Yes, that will do it for this edition of Conversations with Nicole. Until I see you again, I hope you have a great day.